Sovereignty is the supreme authority within a territory. Sovereignty entails hierarchy within the state, as well as external autonomy for states. In any state, sovereignty is assigned to the person, body, or institution that has the ultimate authority over other people in order to establish a law or change an existing law. In political theory, sovereignty is a substantive term designating supreme legitimate authority over some polity. In international law, sovereignty is the exercise of power by a state. The jua sovereignty refers to the legal right to do so. The facto sovereignty refers to the factual ability to do so. This can become an issue of special concern upon the failure of the usual expectation that the jua and the facto sovereignty exist at the place and time of concern and reside within the same organization. The term arises from the unattested vulgar Latin's asterisk superanus, meaning chief, ruler, its spelling, which varied from the word's first appearance in English in the 14th century, was influenced by the English reign. The concepts of sovereignty have been discussed throughout history and are still actively debated. Its definition, concept, and application has changed throughout, especially during the Age of Enlightenment. The current notion of state sovereignty contains four aspects consisting of territory, population, authority and recognition. According to Stephen D. Krasner, the term could also be understood in four different ways. Often, these four aspects all appear together. But this is not necessarily the case, they are not affected by one another. And there are historical examples of states that were non-sovereign in one aspect while at the same time being sovereign in another of these aspects. According to Emanuel Wallerstein, another fundamental feature of sovereignty is that it is a claim that must be recognized by others. If it is to have any meaning, sovereignty is more than anything else a matter of legitimacy requires reciprocal recognition. Sovereignty is a hypothetical trade, in which two potentially conflicting sides, respecting the facto realities of power, exchange such recognitions as their least costly strategy. The Roman jurist Ulpian observed that, Ulpian was expressing the idea that the emperor exercised a rather absolute form of sovereignty that originated in the people. Although he did not use the term expressly, Ulpian's statements were known in medieval Europe, but sovereignty was an important concept in medieval times. Medieval monarchs were not sovereign, at least not strongly so, because they were constrained by, and shared power with, their feudal aristocracy. Furthermore, both were strongly constrained by custom. Sovereignty existed during the medieval period as the de jure rights of nobility and royalty, and in the de facto capability of individuals to make their own choices in life. Around 1380 to 1400, the issue of feminine sovereignty was addressed in Geoffrey Chaucer's Middle English collection of Canterbury Tales, specifically in The Wife of Bath's Tale, a later English Arthurian romance. The wedding of Sir Gawain and Dame Ragnall uses many of the same elements of the wife of Bath's tale, yet changes the setting to the court of King Arthur and the knights of the round table. The story revolves around the knight Sir Gawain granting to Dame Ragnall, his new bride, what is purported to be wanted most by women, sovereignty, we desire most from men, from men both learned and poor, to have sovereignty without lies. For where we have sovereignty, all is ours, though a knight be ever so fierce, and ever win mastery, it is our desire to have master over such a sir, such is our purpose. Sovereignty re-emerged as a concept in the late 16th century, a time when civil wars had created a craving for stronger central authority, when monarchs had begun to gather power onto their own hands at the expense of the nobility, and the modern nation-state was emerging. Jean Baudin, partly in reaction to the chaos of the French wars of religion, presented theories of sovereignty calling for strong central authority in the form of absolute monarchy. In his 1576 treatise Les Six Livres de la République, Baudin argued that it is inherent in the nature of the state that sovereignty must be. Baudin rejected the notion of transference of sovereignty from people to the ruler, as well as the fundamental laws of the state that determine who is the sovereign who succeeds to sovereignty, and what limits the sovereign power.
Thus, Bowdoin's sovereign was restricted by the constitutional law of the state and by the higher law that was considered as binding upon every human being. The fact that the sovereign must obey divine and natural law imposes ethical constraints on him. Bowdoin also held that the lowest royals, the fundamental laws of the French monarchy which regulated matters such as succession, are natural laws and are binding on the French sovereign. Despite his commitment to absolute